What's up everyone? Welcome back to Super Carmio. Today we're picking up right where we left off and we're going to be installing the oil pan fitting, oil lines, coolant lines, and we'll be mocking up the intercooler. Let's get started. All right guys, so here is the bag of goodies from ATP Turbo. This bag has all the fittings and coolant and oil lines that we'll need. So let's go through them real quick. Here we have the oil restrictor that goes from dash 4N to the turbo. And we have our banjo coolant fittings that will go onto each side of the turbo and adapt to a bung for a standard heater hose line. This is the oil feed line, dash 4AN, that will go from fitting on the block to the top of the turbo. The metric fitting that goes from the stock Miata oil feed plug to a dash 4AN line. On the bottom of the turbo we'll have the drain, dash 10 drain with the gasket and bolts. Then we have our dash 10 return line that goes to the oil pan. Got some clamps to tighten those down. Then we have the gasket in between the turbo and the exhaust manifold, as well as the turbo and the downpipe. All right, we're gonna start with the oil feed first. So you're gonna wanna take off this plug right here. It's a 14 millimeter socket. Um, we'll remove that and install the fitting that converts from the metric size to dash 4AN. Then we'll install our supply line. Now you don't want to over tighten AN fit-ins. They are aluminum, so nothing crazy here. They could strip pretty easily. Okay, so here's everything you'll need to tap your oil pan. We have some grease. We have our 3 8 MPT to 5 8 bung our 916 drill bit with a little bumper made out of some rubber hose just so we don't stick it in too far. You're going to want to have that bumper expose about a quarter or a half inch of this uh, drill bit. Then we have a center punch to help align our drill bit. Then we have our 3 8 MPT tap and some sealant for the threads. Let's get to it. Alright so if this is the oil pan and this is facing front, you're going to want to First mark your hole two inches down from where the pan meets the bottom of the engine block and then go as far back as you can. So somewhere around right here. So right below the AC compressor if you have it. So once again, two inches down about and then as far right as you can. So that mark on the right is where we're gonna be drilling. Um, it'll also help to zip tie these AC lines if you have it out of the way, just so you could get a clean drill. You're going to want to keep the drill as parallel to the ground as possible when going into the pan. And finally, before you drill, you're going to want to put some grease on the flutes of the bit just to catch all the metal shavings. Um, and you're also going to want to periodically take the bit out and clean off the metal shavings and reapply the grease. As you can see, we're getting there. We're taking our time, making sure to collect the shavings when we can. But as you can see, we've penetrated the pan, so we don't want to go too much further than this. All right, so now we're gonna tap the oil pan. As you can see, I've greased the flutes of this tap. I've also marked one edge with a Sharpie. That way we could keep track of how many turns we've done. Um, in general, I'm gonna do one turn clockwise and then a half turn counterclockwise and just repeat. Um, we're not going to go too far because remember we do not want to hit that tube that's running across the oil pan. Um, so we'll probably end up with two or three threads in that hole that we created. Okay, as you can see we have our tap inserted with our little indicator right there. And what I'll do is do a whole turn clockwise. And there we go and then I'll do a half turn counterclockwise. And then we'll repeat. Okay, 
this point I'm gonna check to see how many threads we have and make sure that we haven't gone too deep. As you might be able to see, our threads are starting to form. I'm just gonna do a few more turns and then we'll be good. And then we're gonna try to thread in our fitting. It's also a good idea to clean your tap in between just because as you'll see that grease catches a ton of debris. So uh, I'm gonna clean that up and then do a few more turns and then we should be good. Next we'll put some sealant on our threads. Um, you will want a silicone based sealant or you could use epoxy if you want. Um, this is a tapered fitting which means that as you start to tighten it in it will start to seal. Um, so don't be surprised if there's a few threads uh, showing. Um, note that it still will be sealed. Just don't expect it to go completely flush against the oil pan. Alright here we go. So um, you will want to be able to thread this with your fingers. If it doesn't feel right and you have to muscle it in, um, you will probably cross thread in it. So back out and start again and make sure that you're completely center. And then in terms of tying it, as I said, once you start going, you'll feel, feel some resistance, which means you're getting there. Um, so don't go crazy torquing this thing in. This aluminum is pretty easy to strip, so uh, don't put too much torque on it. And there it is. Our oil pan tap is complete. So at this point you'll want to drain the oil, uh, basically perform an oil change. So change out the filter, drain all the oil. Okay, now we'll start working on the turbo. This is the bottom of the turbo. This is where the oil drain is going to go. So we're going to attach our gasket with our fitting and then our 5 8 line. Next, we'll move on to installing the restrictor on the top feed of the turbo oil. Um, and you'll want your restrictor orifice to face up. So this metric side is gonna go inside the turbo. And then dash four AN on the top. Next, we'll put in our banjo fittings for the coolant lines. And this is basically how it's gonna go. It's gonna convert this fitting to a 5 16 heater hose line. And don't forget your copper washers. So in total, you'll be using two washers per side. All right, so this turbo is good to go. We have both of our coolant ports, our oil feed, and our oil return. To make things a little easier, we're gonna attach our coolant lines from now. So it's 5 16 heater hose. All right, then we're gonna secure it with some hose clamps. And obviously we're gonna cut this line uh, accordingly. It's a little tight, but you should be able to get a clamp on there and tighten it nicely. Next, we'll mount our turbo to our exhaust manifold. Make sure you have a new gasket to go in between. And then you'll tighten down the turbo to the studs with the four nuts. It's a little tight in here, so make sure that you start all of these nuts before you fully tighten down one of them. And before we put everything back on the engine, we're gonna attach our 5 8 drain line. And then we're gonna put some heat sleeve on this line. So now we'll put the manifold and turbo onto the engine and have a brand new three layer exhaust manifold gasket that we'll put in between. All right, at this point, the 24 inch return line is gonna to be too long, so you'll probably have to cut it. As you can see, we now have our oil drain line connected to our oil pan. So we are done underneath here. Next, we'll get our coolant lines ready. So we're gonna attach one to the exit of this thermostat housing and one down there where the mix and housing is located. So we're just basically creating a loop. And just to be specific here, our drain line was 19 inches, and this first coolant line is also 19 inches. Okay, so we have one side of our coolant lines hooked up, and then next we'll remove 
this line right here and connect our second side. And as you can see, I already covered it in some DEI 3 quarters of an inch sheath. Right, so for reference, this line is 26 and a half inches and it's going right on that fitting right there. Okay, here are the lines connected and you're going to want to tuck them as far back as you can so that it doesn't hit any of the accessory belts. And I just cleaned up a little bit, grouped together, and you'll have them both connected. Now I forgot to hook up my oil feed line, so it's going to be a little harder to get to. Um, for you guys, you should definitely do this before you attach the coolant lines. Okay, so all of our lines are fitted. We can now mount the manifold to the head. So you'll put all of your manifold nuts on and then slowly tighten them in a cross pattern. Um, you're just going to want to do this in stages. Alright, everything's bolted in. Next we're just going to put our intake on. I think this might be a little temporary just because I do want to add a catch can here and use the vacuum to pull from this uh, valve cover port. So now we can start working on the intercooler. So originally I wanted to utilize this old Evo 8 intercooler just because I had it and it was free. But uh, unfortunately at 31 inches from intake to intake it was simply too wide uh, to fit in here without hacking up everything. So instead I got this nice little eBay V-mount. Um, so the total width is about 24 inches, uh, including the end takes. It's two and a half inches thick and 13 inches high. So I've already gone ahead and tried to slide it in there and it seems like it'll fit pretty good. The um, only thing we'll have to do is either remove the AC or remove that condenser, I believe it is. Um, but yeah, let's see how it looks. So as you can see, it slides in quite nicely. The um, only issue is right now it just shifted a little, little to the right because of that AC condenser. So what we'll want to do is either bend it out of the way or completely remove it. And that way this intercooler will be centered inside of the bumper so it won't look stupid. So after removing some of the AC components, here's what the intercooler is looking like. You can see it fits pretty nicely. Might be a little trickier than I thought to fit the intercooler pipe in through this hole, so I might have to enlarge it a little bit. But as a whole, it looks pretty fresh. So there's two holes on both sides that I think we could bend something in place and mount it to this bung right here. Here's how it looks after bending it. All right, well, I just added some rubber isolators just to absorb some of the vibrations and so forth. And then I'll attach my L bracket right here on top of the isolator, and mount it to the body right here. All right, well, as you can see, this intercooler is now hanging all by itself. Still wanna firm up the mountain by putting some extra mounts on the bottom, but it's looking pretty good pretty clean. All right guys, well that's gonna be it for today. We have successfully mounted the turbo, manifold, and oil and coolant lines to the engine. Next time we'll finalize the intercooler plumbing and get this thing back on the road. As per usual, if you like the content, press that like button. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.